Welcome to Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark, and we're continuing our series of studies in the book of Ruth, and we are in chapter 3, starting at verse 9 this lesson. But before we begin, our theme verse for Lunch of the Lord, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of our hearts. And I think that, you know, like the old saying, you learn something new every day. Well, I think as I was studying for this lesson, I learned something new. And I think you're going to learn uh, the same new thing uh, that, that I learned in this lesson. And we'll see it uh, here in verse 9. And it says here, Starting at verse 9, it says, And he said, meaning Boaz, remember, Boaz uh, was working all day. He was threshing either his barley or his wheat. And it's dark now, and he's getting ready to go to bed. And he lays down, and Ruth, she is a little bit off into the distance, and she waits for him to get to sleep. And then she comes, and she uncovers his feet. And she lays down next to him at his feet. Well, actually not next to him, but she lays down at his feet. And it says, and remember last lesson in verse 8, it says, And it came to pass at midnight that the man, Boaz, was afraid. And he turned himself, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. And now it says a woman lay at his feet, which means that he knew that it was a woman, but he didn't know who it was. So Boaz wakes up and he, he turns himself and he sees that it's a woman and he's startled, but he doesn't know who this woman is. So now he says in verse nine, and he said, who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your handmaid. Spread therefore your skirt over your handmaid, for you are a near kinsman. Now, she says here, spread therefore your skirt over your handmaid. Now, the thing that I learned new was that usually when you read this, you automatically think that, well, of course, she told him to spread his skirt over her and uh, because she was his handmaid and obviously he did it. Well, that's not necessarily what happened. In fact, I don't think it did happen. I don't think Boaz did spread his skirt over her. All right. Now, and the reason why is this, to spread the skirt over a woman was a deliberate act of showing the intention of taking her as his wife. You may say, well, didn't Boaz and Ruth get married? Yes, they did. <laughs> they did get married. Well, well, then what's wrong? Why didn't he do it? Ah, and that's the key. But, but did Boaz spread his skirt over her? It's possible from verse 11, when Boaz says in verse 11, and now my daughter, fear not. This is what he says. And now my daughter, fear not. So it's possible that from verse 11, that Boaz actually didn't, didn't spread his skirt over her because he knew that, Bo, that Boaz knew that he wasn't the nearest kinsman and he had no right of first claim of marriage on Ruth. All right, remember, we said that to spread your skirt over the woman is a deliberate act of making her, well, or of wanting her to be your wife. But Boaz, remember, Boaz is an honorable man. He loves God and he serves God and he honors God's word. And Ruth also. So she says to Boaz, spread your skirt over me. But Boaz, Boaz, I don't believe Boaz did. And there are many scholars that also believe the same, that Boaz didn't do it. And the reason is because for Boaz to spread his skirt over Ruth, it would be a, uh, it, it, he would be going against the word of God, going against God's requirements. 
Okay? So, if it's true that the act of covering a woman was as good as an engagement, then it's more likely that Boaz did not cover her. Why? Because Boaz knew that there was a nearer kinsman than him. And Boaz would not, in honoring God, Boaz would not try to, how can I say, undercut the nearest kinsman and to claim Ruth for himself before the nearest kinsman had an opportunity to do it. All right? So, just because Ruth says, Boaz, spread your skirt over me, does not mean that he actually did it. Uh, when we understand what the culture was at the time. So, she says here, I am Ruth, your handmaid. Spread, therefore, your skirt over your handmaid, for you are a near kinsman. That's true. He's a near kinsman, but he's not the nearest kinsman. And, and I don't believe Boaz was ready to spread his skirt over her and to claim her as his wife. Now, again, that, that doesn't mean that if he spread his skirt that over her that she immediately became his wife. No, it was like an engagement ring, all right? It's like becoming engaged. And I don't believe Boaz would do that. Verse 10 says, And he said, Blessed be you of the Lord, my daughter, for you have shown more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as you followed not young men, whether poor or rich. So the meaning of this verse is that Ruth, by willfully abstaining from younger and more handsome men, was honoring her husband even more, even though he was dead, than when he was alive. So even though uh, Malon was dead, her husband, that by her abstaining from young or rich men, she was, she was honoring Malon more when he was dead than if he was alive. So, and in this verse here, this reveals the steadfast intent of Ruth to obey, to obey the law as given by God. Ruth was, Ruth devoted herself to Naomi. And not only to Naomi, but she said, your God is my God. And she completely gave herself to the God of Israel, to the God of Israel. And not only did she give herself to the God of Israel, but she also gave herself to the words of the God of Israel. And she wanted to honor him. And she wanted to obey his word. And But Ruth didn't have to seek to be redeemed by Boaz. Remember, Boaz, Boaz was Elimelech's family and was probably about Elimelech's age. So Boaz and Elimelech, uh, uh, Ruth's father-in-law, were probably about the same age. Ruth could have chosen a young or rich man to marry in Israel, or even a young or rich man to marry back in Moab. This is what she could have done, but she chose not to. Why? Because she wanted to honor the God of Israel and she wanted to honor his word. And she was not going to be sidetracked. She knew whether it was because uh, Naomi taught her or, but she knew that, that, to, that to be honored, to honor God and to be honored by God would be to obey his word. And to obey God's word means that she would abstain. She, would, she was going to live her life God's way. God's way. And God's way was, was to uh, at least present herself to Boaz so that Boaz could marry her. Now, the question comes up. Here, so here's, here's Ruth. She's uh, probably young. I, 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 
again, she's she was married at uh, least t probably 10 years ago. She, she's probably in her 30s now. I'm, I'm guessing, again, I'm just guessing about she's in her 30s. Possibly uh, Boaz is, is in his 50s or so. Again, I'm, I'm about guessing. And she could, in a sense, look and say, well, why would... <laughs> <laughs> Why would I want to marry somebody that could be my, that would probably be my father, right? The age of my father. And yet, you know, would we choose to obey God's word even to our own denying of some pleasure in order to obey the word of God? Would we obey the word of God? by denying ourselves some pleasure right and, and and this is what this is what ruth did her she had a she had a choice i can disobey god's word and go out and live in the pleasures of this world i can find myself a nice handsome rich young israelite man right maybe he's got a nice job uh, maybe he's got a, you know, some land and farming and he's just starting out, but he's handsome and he's young and he's more my age and he more, you know, he kind of would understand me better. Um, or maybe, you know, he's, he's a, you know, a carpenter or something like that. Why do I want to marry this old Boaz, right? Why should I marry this old guy that's probably could be my father? Why should I do that? Right? And, and this is how people think. See, to obey the word of God, sometimes we have to what? In Psalm 15, verse 4, what does it say? We swear to our own hurt. We obey God's word. What? To our own hurt. To our own hurt. And sometimes there, we, we enter into times in our life when when we have a choice to obey God's word is going to, in a sense, hurt us. But in reality, it's not. That's where the blessing comes from. You see, if you look at it in an earthly way, if you look at it in a, in a, in a, in, with the human mentality to obey God's word, well, I'm going to be hurt by that, right? I, I'm, I'm going to be depriving myself of some pleasurable thing, a nice, young, handsome man or a nice nice, young, pretty girl, right? Or I'm going to be, if I obey God's word, then I'm going to be uh, denying something, some pleasurable thing for me. And then, of course, we twist it. Well, if I, if I obey God's, if, if I uh, disobey God's word, I, I can have this nice, pleasurable thing. And, and I'll use it for God's glory, right? I'll take it and I'll use it for God's glory somehow, right? This is how we twist the word of God. And yet, no, we need to have a conviction that we are going to, we are going to, when we, listen, when we committed ourselves to God, we committed ourselves to his word also. And we, we, we committed ourselves. We said, Jesus, I can't save myself. Come into my heart be my Lord and my Savior. And when we did that, the Holy Spirit came within and we committed our life to not only obey God, but his word. And sometimes obeying the word of God is, it is a seeming a hurt to us. It seemingly hurts to obey God's word. Why? Because it goes against, it goes against our, 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 heart's desire, our sinful heart's desire of wanting pleasures, wanting beautiful things. And sometimes, and sometimes uh, we, we, to obey God's word brings hurt to us. It's a seeming hurt. Why? Because, listen, Ruth, right, because of what Ruth did, because Ruth chose to obey God and to, and to live her life God's way, because she chose that. You know what? You know what she's doing right now in heaven? I'll bet, I'll bet you that she's shining like the stars in heaven. I'll bet you she's shining brighter than the stars of heaven because God blessed her. She chose to obey God and his word 
and God rewarded her. God rewarded her for her obedience to his word. And God blessed her not only with a, with a husband, but he blessed her with a son. And not only that, but when she died and she entered into heaven, I'll bet you she's shining glorious. God blessed her with tremendous blessings, tremendous treasures in heaven because she denied herself earthly pleasures. Why? So that she could obey the word of God, even if it was seemingly hurt here. And I'm telling you, when you, you can, listen, listen, you can never lose. You can never lose when you obey the word of God. You can never lose. I'm telling you right now, when you obey the word of God, I guarantee you, God, God, you will never lose. You will always win with God when you obey his word. Your flesh doesn't like it. Y'all, why do I have to marry this old man? I know, you know, I could be so much happier with this young, handsome guy right over here, right? He's a, he's a young man just starting out in life. He's got a good job as a carpenter, right? Or he's got a nice little farm here. He's got, his dad gave him this uh, 10 acres of land and, and a couple of sheep and goats and camels and, and we could have a great life, right? This young, handsome guy, we could have lots of kids. No, 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 no. Yeah, you could go that way if you want. But there's no blessing there. There's no obedience to God's word there. There's obedience over here. This is where, this is where the blessing of God, but it doesn't look like a blessing, God. It looks, it doesn't look like, it's not something that's, that's tantalizing to my flesh, to my desires, right? No, this is where the blessing is. God's going to bless you. And when you die and you go to heaven, you'll shine like the stars in heaven. You'll shine brighter than the stars in heaven. The, 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 the tremendous treasures that God has for you for obeying his word and denying your flesh here on earth is, is tremendous in heaven. Ruth made a commitment to stay with Naomi and that God would be her God. And now it seems that she is stuck having to marry Boaz. But to a truly committed person, to honor God and to honor his word is a tremendous honor. It's not seen as being stuck. To the world, you should get out from underneath the bondage of the law. But Ruth's heart was set and she wasn't swerving. She wasn't going to sway to the left or to the right. See, to the world, why should I be? Why should I be in bondage to the law, right? Why should I be in bondage to what God said? If I, if I obey what God said, I'm going to get this thing. I'd rather have this. This is much more prettier, much more, much more better for me over here. That's what I think. But no, the world's mentality is if you obey God, you're going to be stuck in this thing. But see, to the, the person whose heart is tender towards God, person whose heart is, is set on God and his word, you're not stuck. That's where the blessing is. The, ble the real blessing is over here. It's with Boaz, right? And it's with what God gives you through Boaz. It's not what God gives you through this other thing. It's what God gives to you through Boaz. Boaz is your provision. That's where the word of God is. So now here, Ruth, she's going to Boaz and she's giving herself and letting, letting Boaz know that she wants Boaz to marry her. And Boaz says, yeah, we're going to get here in another, uh, another verse. Boaz tells her, you know, I'm a, I'm a kinsman, but I'm not your nearest kinsman. And we need to check it out with your nearest kinsman first to see if he wants to uh, take you as his wife. But so now, so Ruth goes and she presents herself. But really, there's she had no guarantee that Boaz would either take her or not. She didn't know if the nearest kinsman would take her or not. But she's she's laying herself out completely. In, she's putting herself completely in God's hands. 
to guide her, to direct her. And, and whatever, and if Boaz receives her, great. If Boaz rejects her, well, then she goes to the next kinsman and she goes on down the line until she finds someone, in, in, uh, a relative that is willing to marry and redeem her. All right, until next lesson, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.